Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to talk to you about X-ray powder diffraction or XRPD. I decided to do this video as a topic because we recently bought a X-ray powder diffractometer for work and at some point I decided hey why not stick my GoPro camera inside it. I didn't break the camera and I have a video for you now so here we are. X-ray powder diffraction is a very useful technique for determining physical characteristics of material uh, as well as pattern matching identification and it's been used everywhere. It's used for material science, it's been used even on the Mars Curiosity rover. They have a very small x-ray powder diffractometer for telling what different crystal phases of minerals are on Mars because we have a very extensive understanding of what the different structures of uh, crystals should be and by way of x-ray powder diffraction we can actually see what is on Mars. That's just one example. For me, it's pharmaceutical industry, so I'll tie it back to that at the very end. X-ray crystallography relies on this wonderful thing called Bragg's Law. I'm going to skip all the boring physics, but all it boils down to is that for any given wavelength of a beam of X-rays, at any particular given angle, there's only one distance between two parallel planes of atoms where you get incident diffracted x-rays which are in constructive interference right all this is dictated by this very simple equation relatively speaking and it means that as you scan across various angles you'll see peaks appear right and actually the instrument itself is a Bruker D2 phaser and they have this really nifty website which made it easy to decide which one I want just kidding, we did take a lot of time to decide what we wanted. But you have an x-ray tube here, a detector for x-rays here, and the sample is actually held here. As you scan the x-ray source across this horizontal sample, peaks start to be detected by the detector. And this helps characterize what the physical sample is like. From a mechanical point of view, you have a lead screw, which moves this sample stage up and down, and two horizontal sliding axes, which allow the arms on the side to move up and down while maintaining this angle geometry here incident to the sample. This is called a 2 theta goniometer, right, or it's a 2 theta geometry also known as bragg brentado parafocusing geometry for those that are crystallography nerds. I'm not going to leave you out. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool instrument for how much it costs us and for how small it is. It's only 200 pounds. Uh, but regardless of that, you have the ability to irradiate powdered samples at a whole bunch of different angles and skipping past all the physics, you can actually characterize different types of crystals of the same chemical composition, right? It can have the same number of carbons, hydrogens, nitrogens, oxygens at the same purity, but it can have two different physical characteristics. All right, so enough of all that boring talk about physics and crystallography. This is what the inside of a XRPD cabinet looks like. Now this cabinet shielded so you can't see inside it, but it also means that the X-rays can't get out. Um, I've put my GoPro inside and uh, use it to record four different camera angles and now it's going to start. On the bottom left hand corner you can see the spinning sample. The sample spins so you can get a statistically random distribution of diffraction events. In the top left corner you can see the lead screw that causes the goniometer arm to descend. Bottom right corner you can see that goniometer arm assembly descending. And on the top right hand corner you can see the detector side of the goniometer arm uh, rising up as it scans the two theta angles. Now on the bottom left corner you can also see this metal uh, slit. This is called an air scattering slit and this reduces the amount of background noise that occurs because x-rays can also scatter off of air as well as other samples. Now the scan's finished and it's going to reset to its home position so you can unload samples and that's it. So by this point you're wondering why even make this video. 
it all started when I put a GoPro camera inside the shielded cabinet to take a look at what it actually looks like inside when it's running, only to find out that 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi can make it through these vent grates on the side, which makes sense because radio waves are a wave and they can bounce off of surfaces. Rays are more likely to be absorbed if they're the correct material. Regardless of that, for the pharmaceutical industry, drug polymorphism is a pretty big deal for the final drug product that goes into people because different crystal polymorphs of the same chemical composition can have drastically different solubilities, bioavailabilities, and even stabilities. Regardless of that, the FDA actually has this fairly interesting guidance document if you so feel so inclined to read through it all, but it talks about why it's important to actually characterize how you set specifications, why you set specifications, and so on and so forth with all the backing information. And this is freely available for anyone to take a look at, so by all means knock yourselves out. Regardless, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please like, subscribe, and comment, and tell me what you uh, think about talking more about these pieces of scientific equipment that uh, don't get talked about too often on YouTube.